Hello, we are going to show you how to inspect the internal components of a McNaught mechanical flow meter. This is applicable for the half inch, which is the 012 series, up to the 4 inch, which is the 100 series. The tools required to carry out this inspection will be an Allen key set, a small flathead screwdriver and a pair of long nose pliers. We'll start by removing the mechanical register and this is done by removing the two cap head screws and a small flathead grub screw that is mounted underneath the register. We'll use an allen key and we'll undo the screws. There's one right there. We just loosen that off. There's one on the other side. We'll loosen that off and around the top of the register there's a little groove and it will have a cap head screw and we loosen that off, it's a little grub screw sorry, we'll loosen that off and that will allow our register to be gently lifted off. Now underneath you can see the two cap head screws that I had to loosen and also at the top there's a little grub screw with a flat blade that needs to be loosened and that allows that to be removed from the cover plate. What we'll do is we'll put that to one side. Now this is your cover plate and the cover plate has a little groove in the side with little notches and those grub screws actually locate into that groove and pick up those little holes and that one at the top is what your screw goes into and that's what locates the register in its position. Now you can loosen those screws and rotate the register round. So when the register is sitting on there, you can rotate the register around 90 degrees if you need to put the flow meter in a vertical position. All right, so that can allow the register to rotate 90 degrees. So we've removed our register, we put that to one side. This is your final gear. We'll then remove the six screws from the cover plate by undoing them. And this will allow us to inspect all the gears inside the gearbox, which sits up underneath this cover plate. So we undo the six screws. And then we can just gently lift off that cover plate. Now the cover plate also the cover plate also has a gear underneath and that's what is your final drive for the, the final gear. So we need to just inspect that gear to make sure that there's no teeth missing. And that cover plate you can buy as a complete unit for the MK Rotolock register. So we put that to one side, the screws there and this opens up the gearbox so that you can see all the gears that are inside the gearbox. There's three different size gears plus your final pinion drive from the rotor and if I put my fingers inside the uh, inlet port of the flow meter and rotate those uh, rotors with my fingers you can see all the gears turning correctly. Alright, we'll start by removing all the gears out of here and this is done by gently removing these little circlip. Put the circlip to one side. You must make note of where the gears come from. It's very important. Now underneath the rotor or underneath the gear will be a, a washer so just be careful and what we do is we place them on the table in the sequence that they come off. There is also a long spacer up underneath that one. Then we start with the second gear and this is done by gently removing the circlip. We put that on our table we then remove the gear. This too will have a washer that is loose underneath. So put that on the bench with the washer and that also has a 
the smaller spacer. The third gear, we remove the circ clip, we remove the gear, and this has a washer and no little spacer up underneath it. We place them flat on our bench in the sequence that they come off with and this has exposed all the internals of the gearbox leaving only the three shafts and that is our final pinion drive from our rotor. So if I turn it you can see that turning. Next we then remove the meter cap and this is done by removing the eight bolts around the meter cap. These will be quite tight. You may need to um, use something to get them loosened. Now this will allow you to inspect the rotors inside the meter. Now we just take them out and put them to one side. And then that meter cap should be able to just gently lift off. And that will expose your rotors. We inspect the meter cap to make sure that there's no scoring or marks. The seal is okay and intact. And we'll just put that to one side. Now underneath that you'll find the rotors. <clears throat> there's the rotor with the, fire, with the pinion drive and then there's the neutral rotor. <clears throat> we can lift these out but pay special attention to what rotor comes off which shaft. You'll notice there is one long shaft and one short shaft. And the reason being is the rotor with the pinion has the pinion down in part of the rotor and it won't allow you to go down and the rotor to sit down. That rotor with the pinion has to go on that short shaft. We then inspect the rotors to make sure that there's no teeth or any damage, nothing missing, um, that they're all okay, nothing's loose, and we just inspect what's going on. We then check the second rotor, that everything's okay. And what we need to do is check to make sure that the rotors aren't loose on those rotor shafts and that they turn very, very free. All right, so that, that is to checking that they're okay. We then inspect the meter body to make sure that there's no marks or any wear or anything in there that's um, stopping them from turning correctly and we just do our final checks. We'll start now by assembling the meter and as I mentioned before this is important that the rotors can only go in one position. So we start with the neutral rotor, the holes need to go down so that it's flat at the top and that has to go on the long shaft. The second rotor with the pinion drive needs to go with the pinion up and it must go so it's in 90 degrees to the neutral rotor. When this is in the correct position you'll see by turning that pinion that both rotors turn and they spin very free. If they're not in the right position and they're one tooth out, you'll find that when they go to turn they will disengage and that's when you know that the rotors aren't in the correct position. So what we need to do is we need to pull them out, stick them back in and, and make sure that they're engaged in the right position. So that's done like that. 
We then get our meter cap, we inspect, we know that it will only go in one position because this pinion has to go through this hole, the other one is a blank hole, and there is two dowel pins that sit in those holes and they locate in those positions. We stick our meter cap back on and then we put our eight bolts back in. These are then tightened down loose. I go around and just nip them very gently. And then we tighten them in, in a cross um, section. So we tighten one, we go across and we tighten the opposing, and then we go in a crisscross pattern and tighten them down. So when all your bolts are tightened up, we can then start by assembling the gearbox. And this is done by putting the gears back in the opposite way. So we start by the small washer going on the short shaft that sits down. Then we start with the small gear and that must engage into the pinion drive of the rotor. And I can check that by just turning the rotors gently by my finger and I can see that gear turning. We then put the little split pin back on and you'll hear a little clip, a little click when that engages on the shaft you know it's seated correctly. The second one is the short spacer goes down. These little washers are there to protect the bottom of the, the gear so they have to sit on top of those spaces and then the gears go down. We then put the little circlip on and as I say you'll hear a little click when that is sitting in its right spot. Like that. Like that. The third one is the longer spacer goes on the longest shaft. Then the flat washer goes down. We then replace the bigger gear. And if that doesn't fit, it's that little circlip's not sitting in its rightful spot. And then that sits down, and then we replace the last circlip. Now when this goes on, like I say, you'll hear a little click. And that's to tell you that it's in the right position. Now, we check our gears are meshed correctly on the gearbox by trying to rotate that final gear. And I can't turn it because all the gears are meshing and, and the pinion stopping me from turning it. Now, if I turn that pinion by my finger, turn the rotors by finger, I can see all the gears turning around. Check to make sure that there's no broken teeth on any of the gears and also on these internal little gears make sure that they're all okay with no damage to them because that will stop your flow meter from working. We then replace our seal that goes up on the top of the cover plate for the or the bottom for the cover plate there. 
Now our cover plate has four little holes and that's for our little um, cap head screws for the MK to sit on and they will go at nine they will go at 90 degree intervals so the one that has the one with the bolt hole goes at the bottom and what we might have to do is just turn that round to get it to engage properly so we'll just turn that round until we get it so that the hole is sitting 90 degrees to the flow meter body you can see it just there and then what we'll do is replace our cover plate bolts six of them and then we do the same in tightening them in a crisscross pattern so just go around and nip them down and then we tighten them up in a cross section until they're firm Once they're down nice and tight, we can then put our register back on. So that is completing the flow meter. We can check that that final gear doesn't turn. And we can also check by turning the rotor inside. We can see that final gear turning very, very slowly. So that tells me that it's okay. We then we're going to tighten up these two ones and then the little screw that's underneath there. So we then place our register back over the mounting. You'll feel that will lock down. And then what we can do is just tighten up the screws up underneath and then that will locate on to the spot. Now as I mentioned before, you can rotate the register around 90 degrees tighten up those screws and you'll find them locate into those little holes so we can just tighten it down and that completes our inspection um, stripping inspecting and replacement of all the components to the mechanical flow meter